This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, this video probably is going to be a really long one, but a lot of things happened in it and a lot of things went wrong. If you want to see a typical startup with all the problems that go along with it, make sure you check it out. All righty, guys, so we're coming down here to do a startup on some uh, brand new equipment that's way out in the middle of boonies. I'm in eastern Ohio, almost to Pennsylvania and West Virginia. So we've went through Amish country. We've been down in the hills. I didn't think I was going to need to record it, but maybe I should. This is about a 3.75 to 4 hour journey uh, to get here. This is a retreat. The guy that, that bid the job has been here with his family multiple times. And uh, I would say this might here might be it. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is we have reheat in this unit here. Some of these are 24 ton, 27 ton, something like that. Return here, supply going up to there and it comes into a plenum split here. And this goes to a sock that uh, all the way down there right up here we have the supply coming in you got a zone damper there zone damper there and that's when it splits off to up here it kind of goes across to those two runs there then way down there we have another big old unit that also does dehumidification and then over here in this corner here we have one that just does regular cooling and then this one right here goes down and goes to this one so basically what we're doing is we're starting up all four of these then our thermostats are over here Laid out just like what we have as far as the building layout. He's using the Honeywell something or another's and I have not done much with these, but supposedly they're pretty nice. That comes into junction panel here. This is gonna be probably our zone stuff. So this is the back side. Ductwork comes down. They had 120 tons of cooling there on that. You can see it kind of turns out to the wilderness there. But uh, this is one of my units. Here's one of the other older units. Me and the guy that quoted it get along pretty good. He trusts me. That's why I'm doing the startup on these. Uh, like I said, here's another one right there that we're going to be working on getting that one started up. Probably not the most exciting thing in the world, but in case uh, you're kind of curious how, how some of these reheat systems work and stuff like that, you'll find out. All right, got the umbrella out. It helps a little bit. We went from cold to now it's freaking hot. We've got three pound pressure coming in. We got to make sure that's set right. We got to set our gas pressure on the inside here. This does not have traditional blowers, has those electronic ones that, uh, well, we've heard about those. If you need one, good luck with it. That's kind of just floppy doinked in there, ain't it? I'll probably get up there and see if I can get that in that track, because that's just going to wiggle until it eventually shorts out on one of those sharp edges. We do at least have the J controller, which is nice. It's easy to program instead of that Siemens thing. I ain't real thrilled with that. So we're going to go through, we're going to check all of our wires, make sure they're tight. You never know what happened on its way over from Mexico. Look at that wire right there, about ready to fall off. They've got no locks on there. Those all look about right. There's smoke detector. It looks like that's already hooked up, so they shouldn't have to diddle dink with that, which is nice. All right, so we got the low voltage done there. And now we need to find out what voltage we actually got here coming into the unit. All right, let's stand off to the side here in case he didn't do something right. There we go. So 210, 212, 212, and then going to ground. 122, go to middle leg. 121, yeah, 122. So there's no wild legs in here, that's good. Let's go over here and change our settings on our transformers, because right now, one easy way to find out what things are gonna be at, if we go R to common, we're running 23.2 volts. I don't like that. So let's go ahead and kill power. We'll move that over to this one here. Same thing on this one. Turn that back on. We have got 26.6 volts. I like that a lot better. All right, so we're good there. Now we can check our phase rotation, uh, either with a phase rotation meter or you can always put your gauge on your suction side of your compressor and see if it starts to drop or don't drop. Red is number one, yellow is two, blue is three. That appears how we did it here. We got black is one, yellow is two. Come in here to our PK Precision 302, hit that, battery's okay, and rotation's one, two, three. 
So that means the rotation should be correct, so we should be good to go on to preliminary starts as far as compressors and stuff when we get to that. I do have a digital meter that can do that, but that's so much easier. And what's nice about this, those other meters can't do, I can hook this up to a motor that has no power, spin it, and it literally will tell me the rotation of the actual motor. I'm looking through there. The installers ran the smoke detector wires right through the opening. All right, so we're able to come through the barometric damper here. What happened is the wire fell down in between it, so we just got to lift it back up. You can see we've got insulated ducts down here. We got insulated fiberboard down there. So we came in through the side here. That wire can be ran across here. I found out that this actually was factory installed. So we're going to put some silver tape on that so it doesn't fall back down. Another thing I noticed too, that free stat over there, they put it right in front of the filter, so that way somebody has to unhook it every time. I thought it was kind of amazing, but all this stuff is factory installed, smoke detectors, economizer, all that. Looks like we got a little bit of pollen going on here. All right, so we've got those there. We'll get one more piece over there in that spot. Wire comes down, ran it through here, wire tied into that, out of the way. Everything's good there. there we go. All right, so we've got a crap ton of sensors here that have occupancy, heating, cooling, humidity, all that happy jazz. And so we've got some of our sensors here. We've got to connect these to the stats. So that's what we're going to do now. What we're going to do, we're going to mount these on these pillars here, skip one and go down one. And then that's going to report back over here to these stats. So we're kind of just going through and syncing these up. These are T10s. All right, so now we're going to use a little bit of alcohol to prep those sticky pads. We got one there, it's a little off. I made a mistake because the thing didn't want to stick, even though we used the wet rag on it. So then we're going to skip one and go down to the next one down there. So we just put it in heat mode. We're going to run this turkey. Let's make sure we're getting a W1. We are. Let's go to W2. We are. So we know we've got that. Somebody was telling me that these sometimes act funny. So I know this one works good. Let's go ahead and shut the gas down. And let's go ahead and check our incoming pressure. We want to make sure that regulator is set correctly. Got that one there. That's on pressure port number two. Pressure port number one. Wow, that's really dropped where the crap in it. That's that's really crappy. We need to adjust that, but I'm a little bit wondering how much pressure drop do we got. So we're running in high fire right now. And yeah, your bottom's differential. So your top is coming in at six and a half inches. Let's see what our factory recommended minimum is. Manifold pressure, three inches. Wow, those are a little lower. Gas supply, five inches. There we go right there. So 13 inches water column is your max. Off to the right, five inches water column is your supply. Manifold is three inches and two inches. Right there's about six, which puts us right in at 3.5 on a manifold, which is a little high. Like I said, three inches is all they want. Close that back up. I know some of these can be mounted up like this. Some of them have to be mounted horizontal. I don't know on this one what it was. I have to trust that the installers read the manual. Ha ha ha. Just did an adjustment, which we'll put the cap back in there to make sure, but we're at three inches manifold. And we're still at 5.9 coming in. We need to drop it down to low. Right now is a good time to use the Jumper King. That way I can flip it back and forth. All right, so we got the Jumper King here. Some people have mixed opinions on it. Yes, jumper cables are cheaper, but what are you getting in this? So you get the fancy case, you're getting the piercing probes. When you add up what it would cost to get the piercing probes, and the magnetics, the ability to universally uh, flip back and forth between them, the breaker right there, because I mean, you buy a little popper breaker, those are usually 15 bucks, if not 20 sometimes. A couple other tricks too, with the piercing probes, you literally can take this outside piece off. This is what uh, HVAC everything showed me. You know, so that little pin right there, you can see how big that is. It fits right in there on some of those thermostats, uh, sub bases. This does have a magnet on the back and a hook, which makes it kind of easy there. That resettable breaker right there. Now I've made one just like this that actually had resistive switches in it, which I end up later changing it to this, 
where you can actually put it into train use. So I actually recommended to him, I said, you guys really ought to make that for so it can do train, train equipment too. Now, of course, I've got this from True Tech Tools. Uh, use discount code survival to get yourself 8% off. Uh, it's got that protective screen here. That's why it's got that haze look to it. I'm leaving that on. Uh, these little jumpers here, you can take that and plug that right into your meter if you wanted to. So if you wanted to read something straight into the meter, you can. So that is something I kind of liked about it. And they are silicone leads. They look a little scrawny, but it's actually silicone material and you can unplug them and you can actually jump other ones to the in between there. So you can plug that into another one if you needed to. But the jumpers or the actual clamps here, you can see how big that gets, which is really strong. It ain't falling off. What right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go low. So we're gonna turn on R. We're gonna go ahead and turn on Yellow there, that's gonna put us into first stage gas. Incoming gas pressure is six and a half. Manifold's 1.5, 1.6. So we wanted two. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the next one. All right, so we got our date there, and so we're double written. That way, if somebody comes back later, they'll know that we actually set it up. So we'll set it for the two inches. not over fire it just to avoid it flip it back to w2 right there's three inches take it back down again 1.92 close enough to two for me all right we need to check temperature rise uh, and we can kind of see we can also do our static pressure too all right so i wanted to use the field piece app but as usual they're got to have your cotton pick and login information and I got more things to do than to log in, and it was logged in, but unfortunately I don't remember it, and I ain't got time to figure that crap out. You're out in the field, you wanna get work done. That's the reason why I abandoned their crap to begin with. Half these apps don't even work half the time anyway. So there's my rant for the day. So they say you're supposed to point with the direction of the flow. Let's go ahead and kick it into high. So we're good on that. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show the temperature rise. Well, yeah, we'll use uh, one of the other ones. So let's go ahead and get our temperature probes now. We'll use the Testo app since we well, measure quick and field piece both suck yeah. today. we go up here and see what our temperature rise is. Here we go. Uh, air rise, 15 to 55. They don't give it individually, but 15 to 55. So wrote down what we had at C speed, 50%. That way if somebody says, well, he never said that, I can say exactly where it was at when I did it, where my static pressure was, and I'm not making it look pretty. I don't care, half the people don't ever even check this crap. So uh, right now we're doing our final check here, which we'll see what we have. I'm kind of letting it die down and uh, we'll see where we're at for our total rise. So we got her down there at 30 and 33. You have dirty filters that's gonna go up. You know that they're gonna get forgotten. So we've got that done. We're specked out, we're good to go on that. Now we can shut down heat and we can start working on cooling. So we took this panel off. I thought the compressors were in here. They're not. But I did get to see how the factory left the wires less than secure. Stretched that one kind of tight, didn't I? We've got everything hooked back up there. We got another guy starting to get some of the wiring done for me. Cause like I said, I've got four of these units. I got these kind of bent up so they aren't like hanging out there. I'm not impressed with some of this stuff. I mean, you run it right along edges here where you are gonna vibrate into the feet, which eventually is possibly gonna short, but they really didn't do much there. I tighten that up. I'm mainly looking to see if there's any pipes that are gonna rub against anything else. Uh, like this right here, they got it right up against there. That's going to potentially vibrate and not to mention, see what happens when you put copper up against galvanize. You have dissimilar metals, so you have oxidation that can cause some issues possibly there. You're running that right across there where it's gonna possibly vibrate on it. Here's our oil. I don't even see oil in there. What the heck? I see a little bit in that side corner there. I do not, I do not even see oil in there. Wow, that's great. Forgive me for not feeling confident in the quality. You gotta watch for these so they don't rub into nothing. I'm not seeing nothing there. Blades are tight. Good there. Everything's nice as far as the wires are concerned. Nothing's dangling. These are the things you gotta look at when you're trying to start it up. Just making sure that you're not right up against stuff. 
It's just right up against that heater. I mean, it's some thick, thick insulation. Yeah, I mean, we could wire tie that to it so it doesn't vibrate. This here, I mean, that's just, I suppose we could wire tie it around the foot to there and that would hold it there. I think that's what we'll do. Okay, we've got that wire tied to there. It's got a gap. It's going straight across, not with it. If it's hooked to it, it's not gonna vibrate as easily as being loose. The way these work, let's just say for example, first stage, second stage, third stage. You see they got that hot. Uh, they didn't pull that in there real good, did they? It's always good. And yeah, they're a little shy here on that one too. Let's go in here and let's go ahead and turn on the cheat signal. Yep, there goes the fan. Go Y1. Let's just do one for right now. That way we can leave that cover off. See how many fans are running. What in the world? Okay, I see some screws here that are loose. Found something. There's a wire right there. I can't tell if that's just something that fell down in there, but it definitely was getting hit on that. So turn power off, pull that out. It does not look like it is a wire that just fell down in there. All right, so we had to climb down from the top. This is pretty nice. Definitely pretty nice. So we've got some orange here. We'll put that on there. You can see where it hit right there. Uh, they didn't leave anything loose for that. Here's some of these others. You can see what happened. They didn't do anything to hold it. So what they did, they used these cheap plastic clips there that as the sun gets hot and breaks that down, these are gonna fall right into the, into the uh, freaking uh, fan blades again. Okay, it comes across, butt connector. Butt connector. Wire tank comes up from the top. Sucks, but it's what you gotta do. I think oil migrated somewhere in between. Yeah, that's cold, so it's got liquid coming back. That frame rate is the reason why. That feels so looks so slow. We're doing 60 frames a second. All right, so we have hot gas, We've got liquid. Where's suction at, guys? Did we forget to put one on it? Because I don't feel anything back here, and I don't feel anything up there. All right, so come back over here. Here's your suction line. There we go. So you need to tie in there, or you can tie in here. I don't see a liquid line back here, though. Look at that. Why wouldn't you at least put the liquid back here too? That way you can hook your gauge up. So you better have yourself a set of probes to do this. Or two sets of gauges. Because they don't think you're smart enough. If you can work on this, you're not smart enough now to do subcooling superheats beyond me. I do not understand why they do it the way they do this. This is the most neuronic way I've ever seen. If you're above this line, you're overcharged. You're below that line, you're under overcharged, undercharged, whatever. 21 degree drop, I think it was. Well, we've wasted a lot of time making sure this was started right. And that's what sucks. When you do stuff right, it takes forever. And a lot of times you don't have forever to do it. I mean, I don't want to be here late tomorrow. So it's one of those things where if we can get at least another one done yet today, that means we can get two of them done tomorrow and then we could go back and we figure we got a four hour drive back. So we've got 42 and 64.3, do the math real quick here. All right, so we've got it all written down right here. Powers, static, supply, return, what we had, blah, 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 blah. It's there, most people don't even write it down. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing together. Well, we gotta check our um, damper settings yet. All right, we got that one sealed up with a little bit of silicone. Get the other one. Like I said, then we'll do that damper, which, we only want 10%. Got that one there too. All right, so we've got the economizer set pretty low. That's with just fan running. It's taught to run cooling. I did not see anything in here on high setting. Usually you have in here uh, minimum position uh, for high or cooling, you know, at first stage versus second stage. All I see in here is low temperature lockout, mixed air temperature setting 
and your minimum position. Yeah, I had to go to 4.9, it don't even look like 10%. Everything's been checked that can be checked. Still stay in there, stage one, let's go ahead and go to stage two. Doesn't close it down normally. The thought process is if you have to go to second stage, you're having a hard time keeping up, so let's uh, close the damper a little bit more. So we got these labeled. I'm doing that on the back of the stat as well as on the obviously this front. That way if somebody switches them around because these might be programmed for two sensors. These can be these are gonna be programmed for three sensors a piece. All right, the second one's going a little quicker, but that wire style uh, probe sensor there, I'm able to get right in there. Went ahead and switched over to my tablet. I'm trying to knock this one out so we can go back to the hotel. So uh, we got a 0.04 static. I don't seem high. Seems a little odd. Got 42 and 70. We got 28 degree drop. Man, that's, and that's on low. Uh, so far, what we've done is I've had problems with the gas valve would not go to two, uh, three, three uh, inches of water column every time, which is great. So we're gonna have to run that through carrier warranty because we're not gonna drive four hours back. We bought the uh, warranty system on it. Uh, input uh, was right at seven in the quarter area while it was running 6.4, so I left that alone. Switched my voltages around here on this. I made it a lot quicker, pulled that wire across. It's able to wire tie it up. So we got that a little taken care of, didn't have to pin it. Um, didn't have no power to my board here because one of the smoke alarm wires pulled off. But nothing went into the fans this time, which is kind of nice. But uh, heating is done, 35 degree rise, same thing I had before. Um, 28 degrees on, on low. Let's go ahead and uh, see what it is on high. If you look, we are on C there. We can speed that up and touch. Yeah, we're just blasting through this one. Uh, you know, knowing where everything was going to need to be set at it, it goes much quicker on this go around. We had it at 50 before. Let's go ahead and go to maybe 60% there. See how that does. See if that uh, puts things a little more reasonable. So that's bringing it down more reasonable. We're getting some actual latent and sensible both. All right, starting to hear noises from the fans. I would have figured that was have been a fluke, but must be a total issue. I'm wondering if one of those stupid wires are hitting. All right, last time you followed around and it was that one was acting stupid. This time it's this one. Look at that. You got these cheap plastic little gizmos there. That's what's holding it. All right, so we just took the wire tie down, came back up, the head here is holding it. So we've got that. We just gotta put this back on and uh, I think we're gonna quit. We, we just ran uh, second stage and we just got the other stat uh, sensors mounted. What is that down there? That looks like a rating plate. Oh, that fell off the compressor. Yeah, that fell off the compressor down there. Did he drop this thing off a semi? All right, so it is 60 degrees outside, which is perfect because we're able to test out the uh, Jade controller here. And uh, 63 degrees was my switchover point, so it is actually economizing. And I just now pushed it into stage two. Uh, they just used dry bulb sensors on this, which I was wondering why I couldn't find my enthalpy control. So it's kind of surprising. They actually made some improvements here. Look at this. That's easy to get into. So right now our newest dilemma is they sent the wrong dampers. So they are spring closed, power opened. And normally you want spring open, power closed. Well, unfortunately, I guess we got to change the motor spring assembly I called EWC. And so, yeah. Hopefully we can just get a new motor and spring for it. I wanted to test this stupid smoke alarm. And I wanted to trigger it with a little something simpler. Not too overly impressed. Oh, I'm hearing it die down. Yep, got an alarm there. So good, we know that it works. That's one of the things you don't want to play around with. You gotta make sure it's done right. Need to go down and do that one down there. Pretty much we're just repeating the same thing over and over, so it's not gonna record all that crap. If something pops up that's disastrous and something else wrong, then we'll just record that. Quite amazing, awful cold down here in the suction. Like a lot of blood back. Uh, Vaporator's 31, temperature's 28, so that's nice. I check that out. So we're basically blood back. Unbelievable. Been running for a while, still not where it needs to be at. Add if it's above the curve or uh, remove if it's below it. We don't care what superheat is, we don't even want to check that according to this. 27 and a half ton unit, leaving coil temperature. So that's going to be right here. 
Now's a little warmer. They don't even tell you which one you're supposed to go to, do they? I love how that band over there, you can't probably see it. I didn't know I had to build the unit. They all went to race to the bottom. To 104 to nine, so say between 100 and a and 104. Let's go in here, 100, come straight down. Should be running about 475 pounds a head. Let's actually look at what our discharge pressure is. So we're running 330. Okay, and we already know we're flooding. We know that our subcooling is 17, which is a little on the higher side. Let's just go 350, because it don't even hardly go to the chart for that. Come right up. And so we should be somewhere around 70 degrees. If we're above, add charge if above curve. So you're gonna tell me that I'm gonna add refrigerant even though I got 18 degrees subcooling, which means we got plenty of liquid. And we're already flooding as it is. Superheat says TXV is not doing its job or we don't have proper airflow. Come on, man. I challenge to know why they think that's the better way of doing it. When your residential guys are actually checking superheat and subcooling. Here's my two duck probes. We got 60 coming back, 33 going out. We're running super flipping cold. No wonder why this, there's no superheat. There's no load in the building is what we got going on right now. Let's see here, outdoor temperature, 76, so 86, 96. We're about 25 degrees over ambient. So discharge pretty common. And we're going pretty much maximum speed. Sweating. All right, so we have no load whatsoever in there. The design temperature for these is not to try to run 60 degrees in a building. I'm not horribly worried. I'm trying to get, actually, TXV starting to adapt here and there. I'm gonna go with uh, the fact that, you know, smoke alarms work, gas pressure set, temperature rise for the heat's good. Cooling's a little high, but we have no load. When you start putting some actual latent on here and sensible both, this thing's gonna drop. I mean, everything, the majority of the problems we've been dealing with here is factory issues. All right, so we went ahead and checked all these. Going to go ahead and uh, start this other one up. All right, so we got third stage calling and it won't come on. Only that compressor came on. It should go one, then the other, then both. It ain't happening. So they ran the wires right up there. I didn't really plan on building a uh, HVAC unit when I got here. I thought maybe some of this would have been finished at the factory, but this is just ridiculous. Every unit we've got so far has had an issue. The way it's supposed to happen, there's compressor contactor one, then compressor two, and then both of them. Okay, so we got her turned off. Allow me to safely touch. Yeah, that uh, wire right there is the compressor and it's around that sharp edge all right there you can see it yep it has thick insulation because that one there then down here down there that's that's not puncture it's just rust rust whatever you want to call it rubbing got it out of there that definitely would have tested the breakers capabilities this is running this looks like it's my bigger compressor. It's a 154. It sounds awfully noisy, but it's not going backwards. Check phase rotation. All right, guys, so here we go. We have coarseness technology. This goes to a little thermistor thing right here. And guess what? That's wide open. And this thing actually, because it reports back to a logic circuit, decides not to progress on to the next stage of cooling so that they have sums better than none because if you would go to the second stage, you completely shut down your first compressor and which would have meant this one here would have tried to run and it wouldn't have ran. So anyhow, that's what's wrong with that. So brand new unit. We did, like I said, we bought the factory warranty. Factory service can come in here and change this. So add that with the gas valve. Yep, on to the next one. All right, finally something works right. So the two wires there, gray and uh, brown, go to the pink and black striped pink. And it is calling for dehumidification right now. Uh, left them a nice little note in there for that. Gotta get wire nuts on that and I can move on to the other one. Okay, we 
we've got butt connectors on there, which allows me then to check voltage there. It also makes sure that it's not gonna pull off. I like doing it like that. It's something the alarm industry does uh, with little booties, they call it. And they usually just crimp them over. So I'm doing it for that reason there. And then I'll write down here that gray and brown is d -hum. That way somebody comes in later and be like, what is this? They won't have to go through that. Okay, so we're finally at the last one. Open it up. <laughs> That's been exposed for who knows how long. Cover fell off like it did on the other ones. Wonder where the cap went. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, is able to run a wire tie through there and hold that on. Got it attached to that, to that. Good enough, rain's starting to come again. So, yep, we gotta hurry up, get the gas pressure set and make sure the compressors work. All right, so we just got the temporized done there. Now we're doing the three stage here. I'm pretty impressed. I didn't think it was gonna be worth it, um, but just the fact that the fittings and stuff they've got really does make a difference, makes it really easy. And to kick it on, kick it off, kick it on, kick it off, instead of slipping, dropping, shorting something out on the board. Whatever, you know. If you guys are interested in one, pick it up at uh, True Tech Tools, survival, 8% off. So here's C1 because we're in stage one. We're gonna go to stage two, which should make that one drop out and the top one kick in. There we go, dropped out and kicked on almost instantaneous. And the blower speeds up. Third one here, boom. And full bore. There she goes. Wow, imagine that, right? It actually works like it's supposed to. Okay, right now, as we stand, we are 21-ish. So uh, we have a little bit of a noise out of that belt. I checked my alignment and it actually was fine. All right, here's our static pressure on this one. We're a 0.18 and 0.2, grand total 0.4, total external static. P2, let's see if that's on P2. I labeled these to make it easy. Yep, P2 is my external. That's what we got there. This comes in, goes to a boot, and this is on a zone, which like I said, these zone dampers are messed up because they give us the wrong ones. So what we did is we pinned that one, and that one there does work. With one open, they're able to open and close, so you'd normally think of reversing it. Normally open, normally close, just switch on the relays would be enough to work, but unfortunately when they're both closed because it's starting out in closed position, the static pressure is so high that the motors aren't strong enough to overcome the spring force plus the uh, air across it, pushing against it. So that's what we're doing there. And unfortunately we're gonna probably have to figure out a way to get that taken care of. So sales guy slash old technician guy is over here finishing up his work on the thermostats. And uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up. I love that iPad uh, magnetic deal. It makes it easy. Yeah, she's raining pretty good out here. Yep, we're going to have to call it a day. The D hum, we got to check out real quick, but we're going to do that from the stat. Oh, get that panel back in there. Drive home four hours, so 448, so that's 840. I'll be home at 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> we got guys complaining about getting off at 330. All right, let's see what we got. This is D hum only. So D hum, we only have about a seven degree differential. So we are uh, leaving at 59, coming in at 67. So it's just about breaking even. Coming out a little bit cooler, which we're gonna be dehumidifying only in the summertime anyhow. So it's gonna come out a little bit cooler, but not overly cool. And then these stats can overcool by three degrees, just like most of them I've seen. All right, we got that sealed back up. Got our probes, all the covers are back on. Carry this stuff out to the truck. And boy, that bag sure comes in handy. Once again, another True Tech Tools gizmo I got. 8% off with survival. Just a checkout code. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap things up. It's 5.15, time to go home. Hopefully be home by, by 9, 9.30ish, somewhere in that ballpark. It's been a long day today and yesterday. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. All right, guys, that wraps it up. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you would, if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.